Hey guys, and welcome back to another Factorio workshop. As always, I am joined by Matt Zuri. Greetings. And today we are going over some science lab builds. Uh, these are the only two that we've Whoops. had submitted. <laughs> oh jeez, I think. <laughs> oh, that is, uh, I feel like that's actually a really, really good um, intro, potentially. Yeah, it will. Uh... Never walk around with your nuke selected, by the way. Yeah, that yeah. <laughs> I've done that before, so no worries. Um, all right, you you have your bots. My bots are. I don't have bots apparently. Yeah, I got plenty of bots. Don't worry about it. All right. Need some labs though. That's for sure. They're, they're working on it. Alright, so... There we go. Um, yeah, we're going over two... Science builds. Um, these are the only two we've had submitted. And... We figured we haven't really done any science builds this season. We did quite a few, or several last season, uh, lab builds, rather. And... And yeah, we figured this would be good. So both these are belt-based. Uh, the one on the right here is submitted by Stefan, and the one on the left is submitted by uh, Spinba. And they, this one on the left, uh, we'll start here, may, uh, considering we replace everything first. It looks like it's pretty much good to go. So uh, if you, uh, do you want to kind of just go over how this works? Because there's a ton of wires, and it can actually be kind of overwhelming looking at it initially. All the wires connected in a pretty solid grid. The best way to highlight it is to look over this one constant combinator in each corner. And it'll show you how all of the filter inserters are wired together. Right. So what you're supposed to do is you have your four belts carrying, you know, one science pack per lane. And then you tell the constant combinator what is on that belt. Mm -hmm. I suppose you could do it with uh, by detecting what's on the belt, but with this way, as long as you set up beforehand, it'll only move that pack into the science labs and down the chain in that direction, so that you can feed it from all four directions and maintain uh, the correct journey or travel of each science pack, so you don't waste a lot of inserter movement moving packs back and forth like you'll see sometimes in a really big arrays with i'm gonna call them dumb inserters yeah exactly and uh and this can be i mean he has space science on the bottom because it came like this and red blue or red green left and blue military top and then uh, uh purple and yellow right but as i said you could do what wherever like you want however your base works you could tie in whichever packs um, you want just as long as you make sure to set the constant combinator to whatever is on the, the belt. So what we've done here is we've actually wired our little matter sources here from creative mode to these guys. So when we turn these on, it's going to start spawning that particular item to uh, demonstrate. And we could uh, start a research here just to have them doing something. And uh, I'm going to just start turning on these combinators. And you'll see that it sets the inserters. Now you see all the inserter filters light up. So it's actually quite a bit easier to um, tell like which inserters, you know, are going where. So you can see the ones passing uh, vertically from top to bottom are matching the belt that's, you know, on the top. So it helps passing them through. Now, it will take a little bit um, to fill up all the labs just because that's how the pass-through method kind of works. Look at them go. Woohoo. Um, and I actually chose potentially a research that we can't do? No, we should be able to do it. Like I said, it actually, it really will take quite a while to pass everything through, I believe. You can see it's finally, let's, uh, all we have is infinite research. So <laughs> it'll start on it in a second here, but uh, I would say maybe that's one little downside to this build is it just takes a bit to uh, start up. It has a pretty long startup time. You can see there, we're now starting research. It might be better to use stack filter inserters, but they're very much expensive. Yeah, using using stack ones would probably increase uh, the throughput and startup of this. Um, 
So that's that's that one in action. I really like it. I've never actually seen it done quite like this um, in terms of like done on all four sides and then using the combinators and filter inserters to set the filters, uh, which is uh, really cool. Uh, the only downside I can see is that there's no productivity modules in the labs, which is essential if you're doing really long-term research projects. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, and that's, I mean, obviously something you could easily put in here. Uh, he just didn't. Uh, but yeah, definitely recommend putting prod modules in all these labs. Uh, and then over here, uh, Stefan's is also belt-based, but he does have prod modules and beacons as well and has utilized the belt weaving uh, pretty nicely as well to get all the packs to where they need to go. He fell into the trap though of perfectly aligning the beacons with the labs. It, common mistake, if you offset them by one tile, you can get like a 33% speed boost. Yeah, exactly. So if you offset um, to begin with and then go down, you do get more beacon coverage per lab essentially. Um, it's what we would call the 8-8 setup where each lab is hit by eight beacons, and uh, each beacon hits eight labs if um, they actually were able to hit both. That's another disadvantage I see is that, um, you know, each row of beacons is not hitting, uh, you know, each set of two labs, essentially. It's only hitting one on each end. Yeah, I'd call this an 8-4, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, an 8-4. It's because it's the extra room for the, the belts that you needed. But other than that, it's a pretty good design. Yeah, so what they've done here is uh, you would want to share, obviously, these belts like these matter stores are set up. And uh, once we hook these in, they should spread out to where they need to go. And uh, you can see there that they're all starting to turn on. So just make sure, of course, that your belts are fed. Um, you do obviously need to have one type on each lane, except for space science. And then... These guys go down. Uh, this one is actually 60 labs. The one on the left was 100, but again, this one is speed beacon and stuff. I think a better way to call this actually is a 3-3. Three, three. Now I'm looking at the average beacon count is three per, and each one covers on average three. Two, four, two, four, two, four. Oh, yep. That, that's, a, uh, that's a good point. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this guy works good. It, it goes all the way down. You know, the packs reach all the way through. Red and blue belt is certainly enough for this, even with the speeded stuff. And, I mean, really, that kind of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how much uh, further you could build this, though. No, it's probably pretty close to max. They, they may have done, you know, only stopped at this point on purpose rather than making it longer because you probably couldn't go that much longer. But uh, I believe that's going to do it, guys. These are the only lab submissions we did have, but we hadn't done any yet, so we figured we'd do that. A uh, little bit of the hiccup at the beginning, but I left it in because I figured, you know, good lesson. Don't, uh, <laughs> like, quad quadruple check what weapon you have selected when you uh, go to do something. Um, yeah, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed. Any thoughts and stuff we'd like to hear down in the comments? Uh, do you have any last things to add, Zuri? No, other than oops. Sorry. Oops. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it, guys. Thanks for watching as always, and we will see you next time. Later.